You can't burn out till you catch fire. Wow, hi there, Coach Sage Candidate here with another training talk. Today we're gonna to talk about sustainability. No, not environmental sustainability, though I am out here on the beautiful Colorado Trail where it meets the Continental Divide Trail up at a pretty high altitude. I'll put the altitude there. Anyway, we're talking about sustaining peak fitness, peak aerobic fitness for distance running and the amount of time and the type of workouts and the mileage that you could do, maybe, or maybe not, but some considerations on that. So the idea is you can't be batting 100% all year long. Well, maybe some of you can, most people cannot. Usually 52 weeks out of the year, you know, I'm taking a break, I'm taking time totally off after a big race, especially a marathon or an ultra. And I'm also, taking breaks in training. So out of those weeks of the year, maybe most of the year I'm batting 80% fitness, 85% peak fitness. I could really only be over 90% peak fitness for maybe half the year or two thirds of the year during a competitive season. And then I could really only be at 100% peak fitness if I even get there, if I train right progressively for my goal races of the year. Now that can be a couple times out of the year. When we were in school, club system, you peak for outdoor track season, you peak for cross country season in the fall, and that's sustainable because you reset and establish aerobic base either in the summer or the winter usually. And the idea is, and we've seen this, especially this year, because of COVID-19, a lot of people, maybe you had extra time to train, you were, didn't have to commute to work. So this springtime, at least in the Northern Hemisphere, you ramped things up. You trained like crazy. You got in more sleep. You got in consistent high mileage. You got super fit, which is great. It's the way to do it. But maybe your goal race was canceled or postponed. Now, later on in the summer, Maybe you do have a trail race. A lot of races are still canceled, obviously, but can you sustain your really high fitness level for how long? Maybe only 10 weeks, maybe only five weeks. It depends on how hard you've been training, high quality workouts, hard workouts, long runs. It depends on if you've been hitting peak high mileage for months on end, and it depends on your genetics and your whole background in the sport of running. Beautiful. Oh yeah, so what does this mean for your training? Also, basically, any given week out of the year, maybe I'm only doing one or two high quality workouts. What I mean by high quality, well, hill repeats, you know, fart lick, track interval, once a week, and then maybe a long run or a medium long run once a week. But in ultra training, I don't even do a super long run every weekend, every seven days. It's more like every 10 days, right? But to get in peak fitness, we increase the density or the frequency of high quality workouts, right? Start getting up over 80%, 85% max efforts, heart rate spikes, lactate spikes, we start getting really fit, really fast, but not sustainable. I think it's not sustainable mentally as well, because you're pushing yourself into the pain cave all these times during the week. How many months of the year do you really want to do that? Especially if you want to have a long career of five, 10, 15, 30 years, right? So that's the difference. And that's why if you look, business plug, sagerunning.com training plans, we have an aerobic base building plan. It's a free download, sets you off on the right foot, 
if you're starting from lower mileage, but it also teaches how to implement higher quality workouts slowly and progressively. So that's really the idea and the takeaway. Of course, we also sell plans, training plans for any service, any distance at sagerunning.com. All right, commercial over. Let's get back to the training talk. Back in the woods at 11,500 feet. Oh, this altitude makes it hard to breathe. <sighs> Look at how beautiful this trail is though. As you get more experienced, like I've been running year round for over 20 years, last 10 years, been hitting a lot of 100 mile weeks, 160K a week. Uh, I could bounce back pretty quickly with that aerobic base, but to fine tune my fitness, to hit peak fitness, I gotta do very targeted quality workouts, high intensity workouts. I gotta hit peak high mileage for at least over a month, five or six weeks, really high mileage. And I gotta do some long runs specific to the race I'm training for. So high altitude trail race, ultra, you know, gotta get in the hill work, right? Track workouts and speed for road marathon work, downhills for the Boston Marathon, right? And you know, you might be different, but the biggest risks we face for distance runners, a lot of us, is overuse injury. You start hitting high mileage, feeling great, getting fit, boom, stress fracture, boom, shin splints, boom, Achilles tendonitis, boom, knee pain, right? And then you have to take time off, your fitness drops, you're just not able to be consistent. Worst case scenario, you can't even participate in your race and you have to have surgery. So that's tough and I feel for you. And I'm in this sport for longevity, right? I started doing longer ultras, 50 mile, 80K plus ultras back in 2012. And that was after a career of road marathons, right? I've done over 15 road marathons, uh, you know, still do road marathons. They beat you up. Trail ultras, they beat you up. 100 miles, 100K in the mountains. It drains you mentally and physically. And I've known from the past, you know, 2013, I think I did seven or eight trail ultra marathons in a single year, I'm trying to do competitive races like Speed Goat 50K, uh, Lake Sonoma, Transocania, right? So I didn't race well sometimes, and I've shown up flat to 100 milers like Western States and UTMB. And I blame that from inconsistent training and not peaking at the right time when it counts the most. So real life example, learning from my mistakes. Last year I had to burn it real hot for the last three point scoring races for myself in the Golden Trail series. I had to get fit for Sierras and all. Two weeks later, Pikes Peak Marathon, and then right after that Ring of Steel in Scotland. By the time the final in Nepal rolled around, I was burnt out. I was tired. I didn't, I didn't have time to reestablish aerobic base and it showed, but I burned it hot with high mileage, or low mileage actually, high intensity frequent racing. Did pretty solid at Pikes Peak there, second to Killian Jornet, 339. Felt good about that, as well as Sarah's and all, 238, but you know, after those peak performances, things start going downhill in the fall, so it just goes to show, learned my lesson doing uh, mountain ultra trail running, as well as, you know, running college cross country and high school cross country and track. You know, you can set a 5K PR early in the season, and by the end of the season, you're fried. Those are real life application examples of what we're talking about here. Thumbs up. Thumbs up and comment below, share your story. If you could relate to this early season burnout or injury or loss of fitness, that I'm talking about. I know it's happened to me plenty of times. Comment below, let's hear your story. So you have to ask yourself, do I wanna be patient with my season and plan? And I realize this year, things are really up in the air with COVID-19, but do I wanna be in the sport long-term? Do I wanna have longevity where I could run as I get older? Cause I don't know about you, I'm 34 now, getting up there, but I wanna be doing this for decades. And I like the idea of being competitive age group wise. 
And I like the idea that maybe in longer ultras, like 100 milers, I could even do better as I get into my late 30s and early 40s. And I know a lot of you people out there are rocking it with PRs much later in life, 50s, 60s. My dad's in his 60s. He's training for trail ultras. He's already done some longer hilly races uh, and he got into running later in life and he's healthier for it. So we run for health, we run for fun, run for social reasons and definitely to challenge ourselves and push ourselves, but we don't want to hurt ourselves physically. We don't want to get burnt out mentally. Uh, maybe you do, but most people don't. It's a great sport. So words of wisdom closing, or at least what I've learned since starting running and coaching a lot of people out of breath is a big uphill. Um, is that be patient, be patient, take it down week in mileage, realize that once you start doing high intensity hill repeats or time trials or high intensity track workouts, super hard long runs, you'll get in shape really fast. You'll probably get in really good shape, but realize that you might not be able to hold it for months and months and months on end and listen to your body in terms of not getting injured because people are too eager to ramp up their mileage and you got to be patient it's distance running it's like pacing yourself in a long ultra race so thanks so much for all your support on here check out the playlist for more training talks uh shout out to title sponsor hoka one one keeping the dream alive not an ultra trail running now in the summer here in colorado subscribe on here for more of these types of videos Thanks again to the Patreon supporters really making this channel possible. Hope you're doing well. Stay tuned for more. Time to fly.